just lately I've had a lot of inquiries about uh, setting up systems. Um, there's so many different parts to it that it looks really confusing and it's putting people off doing anything with the systems. So in today's video I'm going to show how there's only really five very basic different parts to any system whether you're going from a backpack to the most expensive factory fitted system there is. The five main parts to any system are one, a reservoir, two, a pump, three, a pump controller, four, a battery, and five, some way of getting the water to the windows. Now, I'm not talking about uh, filtration in this video, it's literally just a delivery system. So, once you've got your water in your van or in your car, how are you going to get it onto the windows? I have got videos showing my filtration system, so I'll put a link to them if you'd like to watch that. So, let's get on with it. So the first thing is the reservoir. Basically, all this is, is some way of containing water. So whether you've got a six, seven, eight hundred litre, three hundred litre baffled tank in your vehicle, or you're using 25 litre drums, that is your reservoir. Really simple. So for this, for this video, I'm going to use 25 litre drum of water. So this is our reservoir. The next thing that you're going to need is a pump. Here I've got a SureFlow pump. Uh, these are easily available. I've found SureFlow to be really, uh, really reliable. I've used it all the, all the years I've been window cleaning. This one I actually took out my van recently because it was slowing down a bit but it was nearly 10 years old so it's done a lot of work in that time and never let me down. So this is element number two, the pump. Element number three, a controller. So here is the controller. This is the spring basic controller and the controller is probably one of the most important parts of the whole system. This allows you to set the uh, flow rate of your water so you can use with it a lot higher flow or a lot lower flow uh, so you use more or less water. It also detects dead ends. A dead end is, is basically it turns the pump on and off when you stop the flow of water. So if you're washing your windows you disconnect your pole you don't want your pump to keep running just against uh, a shut off hose and it'll just burn it out. So the controller turns the pump on and off. So that's the reservoir, the pump and the controller. Number four. The battery. So there's a few things to think about when choosing a battery. Uh, first thing that you need to do is use a leisure battery rather than a car battery. That's to do with the way it releases the charge. A car battery is decide, designed to give a big jolt of power, but not very often. A leisure battery is designed to give a slow release of power uh, over a long amount of time. Uh, so it's the leisure battery you want. The next thing you need to think about is charging it. Um, some people have split chargers in the van. Uh, what this is, is a, a relay that swaps the power over to your battery in the back of your van and charges the battery in the van rather than charging the van battery. By using a split charger it makes sure that your van battery doesn't get drained from your pump and it also makes sure that your battery in the back is always charged. The other way of charging it is to plug your battery into a bench charger. I've got a split charger in my van but because I do only very short distances because my work's quite uh, close together you don't always charge it uh, the battery enough so I ch charge it into a bench charger once every two or three weeks just to keep it topped up. The other good thing is to have a voltmeter fitted so you can see the, the condition of your battery at all times that way you can you can work out whether your battery is getting uh, 
dropping down a bit too low and you can stick it on the bench charger if that, if it needs to be. So a voltmeter is only really cheap from uh, eBay and really easy to fit. Uh, the batteries come in amp hours. This one is a this one is a 17 amp hour one. So if I was working all the time, I wouldn't probably use one this small. The higher the amp hours, the longer the battery will last. So the one I've got in the van is 140 amp hours, but I've got the 17 amp hour one here just for demonstration purposes. So the last element is the hose. Now this is just a way of getting your water from your pump onto the windows. Uh, you, for this I'm using a piece of garden hose but you might have a fly lead if you're using a backpack or you might uh, have a hose reel if you've got a van mounted system. All it is is a hose from getting the water from one place to another. So let's have a look at how it all fits together. So as I said this is our reservoir, our water container whether it's a 25 litre container or whether it's a backpack. That is our reservoir. Next we've got our pump. So what we need is some way of getting the water from the reservoir to the pump. So I've got a bit of hose here. Now these SureFlow pumps, the fittings fit hose lock. You can just screw a hose lock uh, tap fitting straight onto it which is really handy. But you'll need, these pumps aren't self priming so really you need your pump lower than your reservoir of water or at least with it coming out the bottom. Uh, this will be a bit awkward today because I haven't got it coming out the bottom, I've got it coming out the top so I might just need to give it a suck to get it going but all you do is your hose fits into your reservoir. Quite often the tanks that you have will come with a barb in the bottom for a hose just to push onto and jubilee clip onto. So you've got your pump. Next you need your controller. Now on the controller there are four wires. The brown and the blue go to the pump. So the brown one goes to the red fitting on the pump and the blue one goes to the black fitting on the pump. That's simple. That's all the wiring up that the pump needs your controller. You've then got two extra cables that come out your controller, a red and a black. So I'll just make it easy for today. Just to extend the cables. So obviously red to red. Now you always need to fit a fuse in the controller. Uh, that is essential. So make sure that as close to the battery as you can get it. Then your battery, for the sake of this, I've just fitted it with dog, uh, ball glove clips. So just clips on like that. That is all there is to your system. I'll just put the hose on. So that is your system complete. All you need to do now is turn your pump on. You can see it's come on there. As I said, this aren't self-priming, so sometimes you'll need to give the hose a bit of a suck to get it going to make sure this is full of water. But actually, this is actually self-primed. So then all you need to do is control the amount of water you've got coming out. And it's that simple. That is all that's involved in a complete water fed pole system. Now you've realised how really simple it is, it, it isn't, there's not much to it. And like I said, that is from the most basic uh, setup, such as a backpack, right up to the most expensive setting. So I hope you found this useful. If you have, make sure you hit the thumbs up button. Um, and also subscribe to my channel if you haven't already done so. Check out my playlists, there's loads there that you might find interesting. So, thanks for watching, bye for now.